I'm Max Pleasure. I'm bisexual. And I don't think I have a coming out story. A story technically um, has to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And um, my coming out has no end. I am endlessly coming out. Um, but first let me tell like this story. So I don't remember like coming out to my siblings or to my friends, but I do remember coming out to my parents and like that's what every coming out story is about. So I was in college. I was devastated because my boyfriend and I had broken up and my dad was gonna take me home for the weekend to let me nurse my wounds in private. And we were sitting at the campus Starbucks and like, I'm just like a mess, not doing well. I think my ex-boyfriend had even come into the Starbucks and me and my dad had to be like, but so anyway, I'm sitting at the table, a disaster, and my dad brought up my ex-girlfriend for some reason, but he didn't know that she was my ex-girlfriend. He was like, you, you know what? Like, I'll never get why you and Meg stopped being friends. And I, I don't remember why he brought it up. I guess like, because I was so like broken down, I just like threw it out there. I was like, well, we don't talk anymore because we broke up. And um, my dad was like, what? He was very surprised. Meg was a friend before she became a secret girlfriend. Anyway, fast forward, I'm back at my parents' house and like, I guess like my mom was on the phone with my sibling and like she handed the phone off to me. Cause I remember like holding like the white and orange house phone that we used to have. And like, I'm like, M -m -m me and Evan broke up. And my mom and my dad are in the kitchen and I hear her go, what? She stomps over. I hear her coming and I know what's coming. And she's like, you and Meg were dating? And I was like, well, we were dating and then we broke up because I cheated on her with Evan, who I was dating before, who I broke up with to be with her, but now he cheated on me, so now we're done. College was rough. My mom was very confused, as anyone would be hearing that story. And she was like, well, are you a lesbian? Um, no, mom, I'm distraught over my ex-boyfriend right now. Like, of course I'm not a lesbian. But I was like, no, mom, I'm bisexual. And so then, like, the conversation just, like, fizzled. I think my mom just kind of, like, walked away and, like, <laughs> had to pick up the phone again and be like, are you still there? <laughs> But so, yeah, like, so that story literally has no end. Like, there was no resolution, there was no like, okay, I hear you, there was no rejection, there was no acceptance. It just like, dot dot dot. It just like trailed off. But like, beyond that, further than that, if I were a lesbian and I came out to my parents, and I didn't have to hide it from anybody else. I could hold hands with my future girlfriend, walk off into the world. And that would be that. My parents would know I'm a lesbian. They would know that all my future partners were gonna be women. And anyone who saw me and my girlfriend walking down the street, holding hands, would know that I'm a lesbian. But because I'm bisexual, a person who is attracted to more than one gender, my sexuality can't be inferred by the person that I'm holding hands with. For me and for other bi plus people, if I want people to know my sexuality, I have to say it. I have to come out all the time. So I am never not coming out. My coming out journey is never over, which <laughs> is very tiring. I listened to a podcast called Two Bi Guys and they put me onto Robin Ox, who is a bisexual educator. And she has a really great quote that really explains this experience experience in perfectly concise language. I recognize the particular challenge of holding an identity that is not visually apparent. In order to be recognized, I have to actively come out. I can be fairly certain that if I don't, I will be misread. Bi folks share the challenge of holding a non-binary identity in a culture that leans heavily on binary assumptions. 
that's exactly it. And there have been so many instances where my sexuality has been assumed. I'll be talking about in the past, like my boyfriend or, oh yeah, my ex-girlfriend. And I'll see that people make a connection and I have to make the choice. Well, do I want to uh, clarify like, oh yeah, my ex-boyfriend and I, we went to the same school. Um, but I'm bisexual, by the way. Like, it's so awkward. And even when it's blatantly assumed, like if someone were to be like, oh, so you're a lesbian, I could be like, well, no, actually I'm bisexual. And then like that term bisexual carries so much stigma and is so misunderstood. There's a high chance I'm gonna have to explain what I mean when I say I'm bisexual. And then like that opens up a whole can of worms. Like, am I gonna have to lay out my whole history for these people? And I don't always wanna do that. And I don't always wanna run that risk risk. And that's why visibility is so important for bi plus people. The more familiar people are with bisexuality, the more that people understand the definitions of these sexualities, that sexuality is incredibly nuanced and can vary among individuals, also that not everything is your business, the less awkward corrections bisexual people are going to have to make, the less sudden interjections. <sighs> and I can't wait for that to happen. Bisexual people make up the majority of the queer community, but we're also the least visible. Like Robin says, we're in a society that is so binary based. The more that we move away from those assumptions, the more visible bisexual people can be and the more prideful bisexual people can be and less afraid and less hidden the less we'll have to come out to people and explain our sexualities all the time. <laughs> But thank you for listening to my coming out story. If your coming out story was even less finite than mine, please share in the comments. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more from me and learn more about bisexuality this month. You can also find me on social media. This month, I'm hosting a fundraiser for Candle Youth Pride's 23rd Annual Common Threads Youth Empowerment Retreat. This retreat empowers queer teens and their allies through workshops and activities that encourage them to be their authentic selves. Common Common Threads is going virtual and they need our help. My goal is to raise $2,300 by Bi Plus Visibility Day on September 23rd for Common Threads 23rd year. See what I did there? If you'd like to donate for the cause, the link is down in the description. Thank you!